right, it is Monday, June 22nd, 2020, and I'm gonna try to take another tour of our garden. It doesn't rain. The last time it started to rain and uh, I had to cut it short, but I'm gonna start in the front yard here and show you some of the things that Elizabeth plants. I don't really do anything up here. This is all her and um, my Aunt Beth uh, said something about daylilies. We have a, a couple a couple um, lilies. I'm not sure if they're daylilies, but we have these ones here. These are, ye are sort of orangish, orangish yellow. Um, we have some herbs. This is thyme. That's oregano. Um, a sage over there. And uh, yeah, we got a bunch of flowers, but uh, daylilies sound great. We're very, we would love to plant some some daylilies. What um, do you, what kind of of colors do you have, Aunt Beth? We'd we'd love to plant some. Um, Elizabeth has, has these 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 uh, I think they're called Japanese uh, Japanese pencil hollies, and. Um, they grow really tall. Supposedly they'll grow like 12 feet, but ours are, they're growing. They're doing good. She does a good job of, of pruning them. And she's got a bunch of other little things, little flowers and things. Um, I really like this flower here. This is like a ground cover flower. It has these, these purple flowers that pop up and it just spills over the side there. It's really neat. Um, and she has, daisies and things and some purple. I'm not sure what all these types of flowers are. But they're they're cool. They attract lots of pollinators. Here's some more uh, some more flowers. Um, this is a this is a uh, Nandina, I think. Nandinas. I used to really like them, but I I heard that they're not a native species to. East Coast, and they're actually not very good for the, the the birds, and so I'd like to get rid of that guy. I like birds, uh, so let's go down and hit the, the spots we didn't get to see last time. Um, we have a little little garden underneath the, the stairs here. Elizabeth has these. Um, I think these are hostas. I'm not sure. I think they're hostas. They grow very well down here. Um, these are some sunflowers. Elizabeth is growing sunflowers here and over there, and over there. Uh, this is more oregano. Grows very, very well. Some more thyme. Um, she's growing some mixture of flowers underneath there. I think there's another lily back there and hostas this i'm excited about this this is this is chamomile and it is doing well we grew this from seed it's doing very well get in there there's a little weed yeah it's chamomile and she planted some uh calendulas back here i don't know if they took off or not um you'll see a lot of clover grows crazy back here we need to weed all that it's an ongoing thing um, we got some more flowers popping up over here I don't know what they are but I'm sure they'll be very nice more oregano here um, marigolds lilies big lilies these are the big ones I'm not like I said I don't know if they're day lilies or what type of we have yellow and we have orange but we like we, we like them and we would love to have more of them um it's a closer look at this box we see we have oh i didn't say we have some garlic this box we planted some garlic last fall it's this almost this whole box and uh it, they grew great and we just um pulled up a bunch of them these ones weren't quite ready to be pulled up so we're gonna keep those there um it was very easy we planted them mid-October, I think, late October. Um, here we got some zucchinis. Zucchinis, they're doing good. They're, they're, 
We enjoy all the sun we get. Here's another pepper, zucchini, zucchini, pepper, basil, lavender. Elizabeth was really excited to grow this. We planted this last year in the summer or the fall, or I think, and uh, it survived the winter. And um, it was very small all winter. It's just a little, little guy. And uh, it took off in the spring once it got warm. Uh, here's a closer look at some of the leftovers. We harvested a bunch of these greens that we grew, like the um, the bok choys. We had some bok choys here. Here's some remnants of the bok choy. It's a, a purple leaf. And they just, they were really, really tasty. And um, yeah, um, pole beans. I These guys are pole beans. Uh, actually, they're not pole beans. They're bush beans, bush beans. Here, I planted two just for higher germination. They both sprouted. Same thing here. This is a bush bean. I'm not sure what this is. Um, I don't, it doesn't look like a bush bean. And um, there's another one growing here, so it might just be a weed. If anybody knows what this is, let me know. Um, here's a lonely, tomato plant. It's doing very well. Um, carrots. We got a couple, one, two, three carrots left? Or no, I have two carrots left. Yeah, I only have two carrots left. Um, I'm not going to pull them up quite yet. Maybe when they, they start to get sad, I'll throw them. But the carrots do well. I like the carrots. I grow weird types. I grow like red carrots and purple carrots and things. Um, this is a, a mustard green. We had a big m mustard green plant here and it dropped a lot of seeds, I think, last year. And uh, this is a mustard green and we harvested some of it. My mom really likes these and maybe it'll keep making seed, uh, leaves in the summer. Here is another bush bean. And that's a bush bean. This bush bean, so I, I want to have a lot of bush beans. Um, see, I planted some more here. Both of these sprouted, so I might, I might move one of these and one of those two over there, and uh, put them somewhere else. This, they, these actually, these are interesting. These I think are kohlrabi. We planted these months ago, and they germinated, but they didn't grow very fast. Uh, uh, I've never, you know, I've never grown kohlrabi. It's a very interesting plant, um, but they're not doing great. They're they're alive, but they're not making any bulbs or the parts that you like to eat. Um, this I think is just a weed. So I'm gonna pull that up. And here's some cabbages that we planted. Um, we, we we've eaten a couple of the leaves. Their leaves are good. Um, let's see a closer look at the lavender doing very good. Here's a closer look at the pole beans. Like I said, I'm growing them up the, the string. This one, it germinated really fast and it is going crazy. It's going up and all the way across. I'm just going to let it go as far as it wants to go. And we already got some, some purple flowers on there, so it's going to make some purple beans for me. Um, these kind of grow the same way as the uh, the um, tomato plants, and uh, they'll they'll send off shoots. They'll try to grow extra stems, and uh, and if you don't want them to do that, you got to prune them pretty regularly. So I'm trying to see if there's an example here. Um, well, you can see, like right. Let's see if I focus there. Yeah, right there. That is going to be another stem. I mean, I can it off now um, but you just got to be careful because at some point they start to grow their flowers almost in the same spot as where the stems grow out so you don't want to you don't want to pop off those you want you don't want to pop off the stems not the flowers um, the tomatoes are doing good lots of little flowers no fruits on these ones yet marigolds down there um, anything else? Uh, Elizabeth, she's got some marigolds down here. 
These are bore edge, bore edge, thyme, sage, rosemary. Actually, there was some rosemary in the front yard too, but I didn't point it out. I forgot about it. Uh, marigolds. This plant, it did very well. It used to be in this box here, and we moved it down here. This is hyssop, and uh, it grows very well here in Fredericksburg. It survived the winter, and it just took off in the spring. Um, this is a herb. You can use it's a, it's a, you can use it as a seasoning when you cook. It's also a medicinal herb. You can make it into a tea. It's, I think it's mentioned in the Bible. It's a very old herb. And it grows really well. And oh yeah, I was gonna show you guys my rain barrels. We bought these four of these uh, 55 gallon drums. Uh, for like 10 bucks each, which, you know, I've heard of people that give them away for free, but 10 bucks each sounded pretty good. Um, and, uh, I hooked them up to, oh, look, look at that, it's a little froggy. It's, uh, I took some pictures of these frogs that live in our backyard, and this one, oh, there he goes. He's called... Cope's gray frog, and uh, there are tons of them. They make a lot of noise at night because they all live back there in a pond back behind their house. Um, I hooked up the rain barrels to our gutter, and, um, and I used a system where um, when it's a slow drain, it'll so just sort of drip through, but if it's high enough volume, it'll be diverted into here into the rain barrels. And then once these get full, there's a um, there's a pipe that once it gets full, it diverts back down into so it doesn't come out the top here and or back or back fill up or any of that stuff. Um, and then in the front, right now we have a tarp on it to prevent the growth of uh, algae and to protect it from UV so the plastic doesn't degrade. Take the tarp off so you can see what I got going on in the front here. Uh, so, I drill a hole at each of the barrels on the bottom and I did some PVC work. I never done, did anything with PVC but it was fun to learn all that. And I, um, Put a, I screw in a thing there with a, some sealant and um, a valve on each one. And then, oh, look, another frog. Hello. And then each of these unscrew so I can take this whole like manifold thing off. And I put a, um, a valve and a tap in the center here and I put one off to the side here with the idea being, um, this would be the one that we would use to like fill up a bucket of water. If we want to just fill up a random bucket, I have a little short hose down here. So if Elizabeth wants to, or if I want to fill up a bucket of water, all I got to do is pick up this hose here and there we go. It's rainwater. It's free. And this one, the idea is that I'm going to hook this one up to a, a, um, a system where I can send the water down into the boxes. I'm, I'm going to do some, um, do some small uh, PVC inside the box beneath the mulch with little holes drilled in it and it'll in each box I'll have that and that water will go into it. I tried to hook it up to the soaker hoses that I've been using to do the boxes and uh, there's just not enough per, uh, enough enough um, pr enough pressure the, the the pressure from you know they're they're up on a hill but it just doesn't push through the soakers. It's just, it's, I mean, it hardly gets wet. So um, they're really designed to have, you know, the pressure from your, uh, your, um, your county water or your city water or your well or whatnot. But the pressure from just having a couple, a couple feet of water just doesn't do it. So that's kind of what I did with the, barrels and the barrels they're only hooked up to one 
one section of our roof. The roof has four sections and this is just half of the garage. And they will fill up with a, about an inch of water. If you have an inch of, of rain, it'll fill these things up. It's amazing how the math works out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have that available during the drier parts of the summer. And I'm just gonna, I just put like these bricks on here to keep the tarp from blowing away. Ugh. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions about what we're doing, uh, just leave a comment and uh, yeah, I'll uh, make another video later in the year, show our, pro our progress. Hopefully the these watermelons will take off. I really like watermelons, but um, yeah. Oh, another thing I didn't show you. We have a little compost bin. So we've been composting. You can get one of these. And it's got a little it's got a little thing down here. You can pop it open. Um, we've been composting. It works okay. It's not very simple to turn it, but uh, it's fine. Alright, well I'm gonna end the video before it starts to rain again. Uh, see you next time. Bye.